um, greetings to everybody. My name is uh, Giovanni Gardovic. I work in the performance teams at SUSE and I am based in Prague, Czech Republic. Um, so, um, in this presentation, I will use uh, some small fonts. There are, some of the slides are dense of information. I will uh, try to remind uh, to use the Zoom functionality, which is provided by BBB. So, as you can see, I can zoom like that, I can move around. Uh, but I would also uh, remind you that there is a small button right here. It's an arrow that you can click and download the PDF of the presentation as we go. So if the font is too small to read on screen, maybe you can use a local viewer if that can help. Uh, okay. So enough of this slide. Uh, next. Schedule chill, frequency governor, current status and performance. Uh, my name is Giovanni Gardovic, already said that. Uh, I did some benchmark and I'm going to report on the results. First, we have to uh, start with some, oh, I forgot, any time you want to interrupt me, feel free to do so, uh, not just at the end. So frequency scaling, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, we slow down the CPU when there is less work to do, so uh, we can save some energy. Governors and drivers, those are terms I'm going to use often. Governors, uh, um, the, the both are piece of software, uh, part of Linux, part of the CPU frac uh, system. Governors implement the algorithm that decide what the next fre frequency is going to be. And drivers communicate this choice to the CPU. Please, Vlastimil, is that a question or just an unintended noise? Probably was just uh, unintended. So we can go on. Um, uh, the the um, the the governors, the the, the frequency scaling governors, take some input in order to decide which frequency to run next. And this input, in general, is a measure of system activity. And uh, normally, it is at CPU granularity. What do I mean? For example, on demand, it's a popular governor, takes idle time from the OS, uh, idle time of a CPU. Um, power save from the Intel P state uh, bundle of the governor and driver uses C0 time, so active time of the CPU, read, read from the hardware. Again, this is a measure that takes the CPU as a whole. But schedule chill is different. Schedule chill. Uh, have a measure of uh, the system activity that uh, is aware of tasks. So we are going to talk about task granularity as opposed to CPU granularity. So this task granularity thing is an improvement. And uh, what it gives is that um, it gives awareness of, uh, uh, sure, it gives awareness of, uh, no problem, Buster. Um, awareness of task migration uh, to uh, across CPUs. So that is the, the principle why it was invented in the first place. Um, so what is this mysterious measure of uh, system activity that Schedule uses? Uh, okay, that was another uh, known no question. Oh. Um, schedule chill, what is this um, uh, measure of uh, CPU activity that, uh, so everybody's joining right now, okay, no problem. No. The measure of uh, um, CPU uh, activity that Schedule chill uses uh, is uh, the PELT utilization of the root rank queue of a CPU. PELT is an acronym, stands for Per Entity Load uh, Tracking. 
and uh, uh, let's use this pencil. So here I made a diagram to explain how, why, what does it mean to be uh, a task granularity. So here uh, I, I draw for red, red bolts, and those are uh, the root rank queues of my four CPUs. I have four CPUs here. And um, those are tasks like this, this, and this. And this uh, uh, represents a group of tasks of those two. Um, each task, take this little dude here, each task has uh, its own utilization. And this is defined by the PELT algorithm. And it is uh, the, the share of time spent on the CPU. Now, how do you measure that? The time is divided into intervals, and old intervals count less than new intervals. Now, the formula is uh, sophisticated, but this is the general idea. So at the leaf of the C group hierarchy, we have this task. We compute their load with this, their utilization with this uh, formula, and then we aggregate uh, as we go up in the hierarchy. And at the end, end of this aggregation, we are going to know what is the utilization of this rank Q. The advantage of, um, so at the end of the day, we are going to have some per CPU measure, but this time is uh, split into task. If this little task here migrates to another CPU, we're going to take its score and immediately um, accrue it to this other rank queue. And this is going to respond faster than um, the C0 time of the CPU that it's going to take some, uh, it's going to have some inertia in order to realize that something just arrived on the CPU and there is more, the CPU is more uh, utilized. Um, the So, so this is the advantage of using um, a ta task granularity. Awareness of uh, um, migration to have a, a, a smaller inertia. Now, um, this was scheduled till. There is another um, uh, novelty uh, from 2015, which is called hardware managed P states. And um, it is a frequency scaling governor, but is implemented entirely in hardware. This is a microcontroller. It's a microcontroller embedded in the Skylake SOC. So the operating system, when there is a, um, HWP in the picture, doesn't have anything to say about uh, frequency uh, changes. It's this microcontroller that takes all decisions. All the as uh, this OS can do is set some uh, uh, mm, direction of operation, the most important of which is this one. Uh, well, they are all somehow important. One is the minimum frequency uh, that uh, so the OS tells this microcontroller, don't go below this one. Maximum frequency, don't go above this one. Desired frequency, this is a way to disable the HWP mechanism. Energy performance preference is a, un, an unspecif under specified uh, knob control value. That is a number between zero and 255 that it sort of sets the mood of this uh, microcontroller, the aggressivity parameter. So zero means performance oriented and uh, 255 means efficiency oriented. But how does that translate into actual uh, behavior? Well, we don't really know. It's, um, it's this microcontroller that does it. And then another thing that is configurable is the activity si window size. So for how, um, how much past activity is considered. So again, this is the inertia of the um, the controller. The, 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 the range of this activity window size is interesting. It's between one microsecond, so 10 at the power of minus six to 20 minutes. So you have this, uh, you, you can choose a value in this range or set it to zero, which is the default. That means uh, the microcontroller is going to figure it out on its own. 
And uh, now um, the, the landscape of uh, um, the various uh, drivers and, um, and uh, uh, go uh, governors that exist and, and a few novelties as of today. So um, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to, uh, to, to go the historic route. So uh, the way this diagram works is that we, no, this is not the correct. The way this diagram work is that we start uh, uh, here, uh, at the the route, and then we follow those uh, paths, and uh, for and, and when we reach a leaf of this diagram, we will have one configuration, one possible configuration. So um, uh, years and years ago, at the beginning of uh, the early two thousand, ACPI CPU frac was the only uh, driver that was available. So if you had an Intel machine, you had to choose this one, and with that one use the generic uh, uh, CPU, um, ge generic governor from uh, CPU frac. Among those uh, generic governor, there is one that is called, um, that is called uh, power save. And now there is an unfor unfortunate clash of names because this other one from Intel P state is also called power save, but they are extremely different. This one goes always at the minimum frequency, and this one choose uh, the frequency based on uh, C0 time. So anyway, we were at uh, CPU, uh, ACPI CPU frac, years 2000, and this was, if you had an Intel CPU, you had to choose this one. Then Intel P state was, uh, I noted the date, was introduced in 2013, because Intel was frustrated of uh, um, mm, the ACPI specification doesn't necessarily include all the latest uh, features of Intel CPUs. So they wanted a way to go without, to make more assumptions in the driver and they um, released the Intel P-State driver that doesn't uh, uh, comply to the design, the modular design of CPU frac where there are governors such as ACPI CPU frac that can work with generic sorry drivers such as ACPI CPU frac that can work with generic governors Intel P state said nope I'm going to bring my own uh, driver my own governors and those governors that uh, Intel P state brought are power save which is uh, uh, the one that uh, uses uh, C0 time as a proxy of system activity and performance that goes always to the max. So this was 2013. Then um, in my timeline, yes, I have uh, the date of 2015, which is the introduction of uh, HWP, the microcontroller that we just uh, uh, discussed. And uh, with this microcontroller, performance and power save acquire two new meanings. Um, before we were used to um, performance being maximum frequency and power save being use C0 time of the CPU, but with uh, HWP performance uh, began meaning use an APP of zero, which is that uh, way to control uh, the HWP and power save use an EPP of 128, which is mid-range. So there are many things named in the same way, just to name, just to, as an example, we have the power save here, always go to minimum, the power save here, use uh, C0 as a proxy of activity, and the power save here, which is magic, use the microcontroller. So um, this was up to, 2015, and then we went to uh, we come to the recent uh, history, which is uh, this uh, part uh, here. Um, Schedule Teal was introduced in 2016 uh, as a way to introduce a scheduler knowledge into frequency selection, and uh, Intel P State uh, gained the passive mode of functioning which is instead of uh, i'm sorry i had a 
an alarm because at this point I was supposed to be on the next slide, but I'm a little late. Um, so they wanted uh, this uh, go uh, governor developed by the maintainer of uh, the PM subsystem. They wanted to test it not only with the um, ACPI CPU frac uh, driver, but with the Intel P state. So they gave Intel P state this passive and active ability. So in, when it is passive, Intel P state sort of complies with the ACPU, with the CPU frac uh, design. Uh, so this is 2016. And then very recently, uh, I'm going to zoom a little more. Very recently, in 5.8, uh, the machine the machines that um, used to uh, default, the, the machines that do not have this microcontroller, so before Skylake, the Skylake generation, um, um, before the Skylake generation, um, they default now to Skedutil instead of to schedule till, instead of defaulting to Intel PowerSafe. This is a way to get more exposure to schedule till. So this is like, okay, let's take the old machines, those that do not have the microcontroller, and, and default them to schedule till. And then there is a new development, even newer, which is from uh, 5.9, which is not yet released. Uh, that is, now we can have, um, we can have, the microcontroller active also when Intel P state is passive. And what so we, so in this in this case this is extremely confusing because what do you have? You have two different governor. You would have, for example, schedule teal, but potentially also um, other generic governors, schedule teal and HWP. Those are two different governors. So who who decide which frequency you go? The answer is that the governor schedule teal or the generic governor decides a lower bound for the microcontroller. And then the microcontroller does the heavy lifting. So this is um, the current situation, the current situation, the, the, the most recent development. And I, uh, so prompted by this uh, rapid uh, escalation of, I mean, it's not an escalation, as schedule teal is, is, it has been in heavy development uh, for, for a few years, so this is not a surprise that there are developments. But uh, um, I, I I made some some benchmarks and found uh, that uh, in in some tests uh, there is uh, equality with uh, the performance governor. Actually, this performance governor, but also this one, depending on which machine. And sometimes there are uh, heavy regression that needs to be addressed by fixing this guy. Uh, so this one is the, the, the largest uh, slide and probably the one that I want to spend the most time on. So this is where the, this, the zoom is going gonna, is gonna to be handy. So first off, um, I had a uh, some notes on what to say. Okay, so um, which machine did I um did i use uh, this time we don't need uh, too, too much zoom because i believe that this is readable i used uh, um uh intel xeon this is a recent machine a skylake uh, sc scalable uh, uh processor then a recent a less recent machine skylake from 2015 um an entry-level server client segment market eight uh, uh core I, I call it eight core it's actually eight threads as a smaller machine. And then a, a more recent machine from 2019, Coffee Lake. This is a mobile uh, um, CPU, it's actually a laptop. This is a Dell XPS. So those are the machines. Columns, uh, which, col which column did I represent? Um, um, uh, did I represent? So uh, the baseline for me is here. Okay, this needs a lot of zoom. Uh, the baseline for me is, uh, SU Gov Sketch Util Governor with HWP. So that would be in our previous map. That would be so you have Sketch Util that was here, and then you have HWP on, which is the most recent thing. 
HWP with Intel State Passive. So that would be this one. Then I also test, uh, so I test, this is the baseline. I want to see what, what, what the rest is against this one. Then uh, uh, against uh, the one without um, HWP, so more classical configurations, that would be this one. Uh, but still schedule chill. So this is basically in these two columns, you see who is that it's making the work. Is this schedule chill alone or does it need the microcontroller to be any good? So this would be the first comparison. Then I have power save and perf gov. Now these are two different columns, but actually just two different settings for the microcontroller. Actually, I should note that uh, uh, so there is a uh, the microcontroller is present in, in several areas. Oops, I'm sorry, I lost a piece of paper. So microcontroller here is uh, um, performance governor, each energy, performance, preference equal zero, maximum performance. Energy, performance, preference equal 128, which is mid-range. This does not have HWP, and this does have HWP, and it's uh, like this one, it's HP. P equal 128. I mean, just to be clear, but um, so uh, so this is for the uh, columns. Then what I have to so top table. So here I have performance and performance per watt uh, perform uh, ratios. So I have a score for for I have a score for. A score for this uh, configuration, then I divide by the score that I got here, and I get this uh, guy. Now, is this good or bad? Depends on what this column says. Here we are looking at T bench, which is a uh, network uh, benchmark throughput, megabyte per second. The larger, the better. So, higher is better. If this is uh, 0 0.68, this is a lot worse than the baseline. Um, so this is performance ratio and performance per watt ratio. Now, performance per watt is a metric that uh, sometimes is confusing, and uh, it, 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 it surely confuses me. Sorry. Um, I always uh, confuse it, and I think that this is uh, a ratio of uh, power, power consumption. That's not true. This is the ratio of operation per second per watt. So the performance is already included. Um, if we make a car analogy, because they we are somehow all familiar with cars, performance per watt would be um, kilometers per liter that you do with an automobile, per liter of fuel, or miles per gallon in uh, other country. Um, the, the, the volume of fuel, it is, is energy. The, the, the distance you, 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 you do is operation. So operation per gel or operation per second per watt. So this is already including, uh, th there is performance in this metric, but this is actually efficiency. We also want to see the raw performance because, okay, maybe to be very efficient, you have to go very slow but uh, who wants to go that slow? So we, we want to look at both. Uh, top table, bottom table, uh, tilde and uh, shaded uh, cells. Tilde means it's the same of baseline and shaded uh, cells means that the baseline is losing. So, okay, let's uh, look like this. So, for example, in this case, uh, uh, I have uh, T-Bench, uh, performance ratio, uh, performance uh, governor, so microcontroller at full power, higher is better. This uh, has 3% uh, uh, more throughput than the baseline. And, uh, yeah. Or for example, this one. This one is interesting. Look, if if we look at this uh, Git source, what is Git source? This is something that I should have said. Git source is a test that we do, and it consists in running the Git unit test suite. So it it is um it is a shell script 
it is a shell script that is uh, that runs one test after the other, so it, it's a heavily serialized workload. Uh, it forks uh, new uh, processes at high rate, and uh, the scheduler load balancer have high high freedom on where to put them. So the CPUs are surprised with new uh, tasks and need to boost their uh, frequency quickly in order to um, to serve them. And those tasks are gonna very often die very quickly. So what happens here? Here we have the performance governor, 20% faster, 15% more efficient. So that is um, that is uh, surprising. How can you be faster and more efficient? Was this free lunch? Uh, it, it, it costs less to go faster. This is a phenomenon that is. Uh, quite uh, present in this test campaign and it explain it is one way to explain it is uh, but I haven't looked into it closely but one way to explain it is that switching frequency has a, an energy cost so if you don't stay long enough in the new state to amortize the price of the, uh, that you paid to change frequency there is uh, there is an energy penalty that, uh, for example, possibly this uh, microcontroller isn't paying because it's going uh, constantly at the high frequency. So it's going fast and it's not paying uh, a high ele electricity bill. Another thing that we often see in this uh, in this test um, campaign is that uh, rarely the schedule teal governor is less efficient than the performance governor. If you see here, here, for example, I have a neutral result, neutral result again. And uh, and this is puzzling because uh, the only reason I do some smart frequency scaling is to save energy. And if I'm not, so, so this is again, um, there are two. I mean, there are two ways to explain it. I don't know which one is the true one, and I'm going to look at this. But either this microcontroller is incredibly smart because this is not just go fast always at the same frequency. This is a microcontroller that takes autonomous decisions, so it could be a very very smart algorithm. So either the microcontroller is very good, but remember that here in this case we're telling it to go full speed. We're telling it. You have two, 255 degrees of sensitivity, of um, adjustability, and I'm telling you, just don't mind. Go as fast as you can. And still, it, it, it manages to save energy. So is it good at, if, at saving energy? Or other explanation, Schedule Teal is leaving a lot on the table. Um, and, and that could be, uh, again, for this uh, situation where switching uh, energy has a cost and uh, switching energy, switching frequency has a cost. And schedule tuning its algorithms doesn't consider that. For example, when you go idle, when you do um, idling in, um, when you enter a non-zero C state, you consider this, th there is this notion of uh, amortizing the, the energy cost, but there isn't in, um, in, in energy, in a frequency switching, which here, maybe we should start considering that. Um, so I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to look at this uh, results in detail. We are 30 minutes in. I mean, feel free to interrupt the question and whatever. Uh, so um, now wait, I, I still have 20, uh, 15 minutes and I have, uh, which slides do I have to? So I'm go we're going to see this Intel HWP. This is the most important because those are the, the, the most recent CPUs, the, the big and expensive ones. So we want to look at this uh, closely. Then we have non HWP, some um, uh, older ones, and then we have AMD. This, but this is the, bo uh, the most uh, beefy one. In any case, uh, I wanted to look at T Bench. T Bench, as we said, as we saw, uh, with HWP, no problem. Sugov, Schedule Shields, doing good. Without HWP, nope. Uh, here I say traveling task problem. This is, um, this is a way to, to, uh, to express uh, the situation where you have a very large machine, lots of cores, and you have a very small number of tasks that migrates all around this uh, large number of cores. The likelihood that this the, the, the task comes back on the same CPU again 
It's very small because there are lots of CPU to choose from if you choose randomly. And uh, um, an algorithm that do not consider migration, that is agnostic to migration, such as uh, those uh, Intel state, for example, power save, uh, the microcontroller to HWP, they have no way to tell uh, that uh, there is this task that is actually one task that is migrating all around. So um, the only way to, 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 bust, to boost frequency is that if the task comes over and over again on the same CPU, which is not happening. So traveling task problem should be easy for scheduled chill, hard for HWP. But here we see scheduled chill without HWP missing a lot. So uh, this is what, 30% down with respect to the um, baseline and 10% down with respect to the baseline. Also, regression in both speed and efficiency here and there. So this tra traveling task problem should be the easy case for Schedule Teal, but here it's not performing well. And, um, and this is uh, to, to look at. Then uh, the bench, um, uh, yeah, uh, here we have, uh, oh yeah, in the bench there is another interesting thing, which I wanted to mention, which is the following. Look at the last table, which is the, um, the laptop uh, against, for example, this one, which is the Skylake uh, server. It says client, but it's actually a, an entry level server, Dell Power Edge. The bench and uh, Power Save HWP. Here we have no difference with respect to anything. And uh, here we have. 12% slowdown and 80% efficiency gain. So this HWP microcontroller behaves differently on the on depending on the class of machines and probably also on the generation. So not only it's a it's a black box, but it's a black box that changes across all dimensions. Uh, laptop uh, 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 HWP is different than server HWP, which is and and Skylake HWP is different than uh, um, Cascade Lake uh, 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 HWP. So uh, that is uh, the, um, you can't really learn about it because next generation you have to learn again. Then um, yeah, this was uh, this was an interesting case. The kernel bench offer an interesting thing right uh, here, which is in the first machine. This is the big one. So kernel bench here. So we have the the microcontroller set at uh, one twenty eight versus the microcontroller set at zero. The microcontroller at one twenty eight should be more efficient because it's more efficiency oriented. Okay, it's slower, but it's also less efficient. So this microcontroller is, um, could uh, use some help uh, sometimes. It's not infallible, obviously. Um, it, it, it has a limitation due to the design. Um, I wouldn't say that kernel bench is a, is a benchmark where those limitations are most uh, exposed. It would be more like a packet processing, stream of packets sort of thing, where you have a, a burst of activity, very like frequent but irregular, because the microcontroller can't predict it's high, it's low, it's high, it's low. So that would be the the the, the adversarial uh, scenario. Kernel bench wasn't quite sure, but in any case, we see that uh, in this case. Uh, HWP takes a hit because you want to be you want it to be more efficient and it's less efficient. So okay, uh, I think 34 minutes. Uh, okay, 10 minutes to go. Let's go next slide. Next slide. Those are the machine with no, non HWP. Uh, so there's the older machines. Instead, in, in, indeed, we have here a Broadwell and a Haswell. And in our uh, map of the situation, um, obviously we can't use HP on because we don't have it. Those are old machines. So in order to have scheduled chill, we have to pass through 
the passive uh, IntelliP State passive HP off. And this is extremely interesting because those are the old machine where since 5.8, this is the default behavior. Before it was uh, vanilla power save. I call it vanilla power save because in Slash we have a uh, vanilla power save is too slow and uh, we had um, auto three patches. Uh, which should be upstream then i should do it uh, it's 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 a lot it's a work that is ongoing um but uh this table is important uh the, the machine is not, not the most recent but those are the one impacted right now right now they have the change in default behavior so we were talking about uh, looking here and then we also look at HP off, but old style, uh, old school power save, which again, it's not the CPU, um, CPU frac generic power save, which is always go minimum frequency that that would be somewhere here. It's the power save that look at C0 as a proxy of activity and performance that it's uh, a simple maximum P state kind of thing. So uh, this situation is uh, not very good, especially the, the this T bench uh, um, T bench uh, uh, test, which it sorry, this is a network bench in localhost. So compute and memory bound uh, the type of uh, um, that's an interesting question, Andreas. Does the HWP get any firmware updates? Um, I have no idea. I I would assume so. I mean, yeah. I I, I don't know. They call it, the thing that the where it is. Um, I'm gonna link it. Um, I'm gonna send you a link later. It's an Anand Tech article. Uh, if you have the proceedings of there is a, an, an accompanying report to this presentation. There is a link to that Anand Tech article where they show the slides at the Skylake Lounge where they announce this uh, power control unit, they call it. But the Intel people call it the P unit. So I don't know. I, I guess it gets a few more updates. Anyway, T-Bench disaster and with also our um, continual testing detected this regression. It's pretty bad and needs to be studied. T-Bench, which test it is? Again, it's a networking test in local host. What it does is it takes, um, it stresses the network. Uh, the detail of implementation is that it's uh, the sister benchmark of D-Bench, which is uh, a Samba benchmark um, that does uh, five system operations. Uh, D-Bench reads the same script of which operation to do, like create a file, delete a file, create a director, and only uh, sends the packet that like it pretends to be a Samba client and sends those packets on the network but without doing any file system it pretends to be a Samba client so it's just uh, some noise noise over the network again local host um, then what else the bench uh, yeah this uh, it's a curiosity more of a technicality um, D bench uh, schedule chill like per, per, for former governor so good the vanilla power save uh, has a regression that we know about um, because of uh, an optimization that upstream has softened and we haven't in our slash uh, version of it the thing is that this optimization called io weight boost um i'm not gonna go into the detail of what it is but it, the same soft version of it is present in schedule chill so vanilla power save and schedule chill has the same uh soft uh io8 boost but schedule chill apparently doesn't suffer git source oh git source i didn't i didn't talk about git source previously uh oh yes it uh, it had the regression in the hwp machine but here it um I mean, uh, schedule chill is leaps and bounds around the uh, power save. Power save is very bad. Um, it uh, it loses to uh, the performance governor. Um, I I would like to stress that in this uh, this is um, the first time that in this kind of testing uh, we are comparing schedule chill against uh, uh, the performance governor. So we consider the incumbent. Uh, governor, the performance governor. Even if on Slash we have power save, 
but we know that people are going to ask for performance. So it's that kind of target that we're trying to set. And, um, and so this is the, 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 the kind of testing that we're doing. Which, uh, for example, if um, in, in upstream development, when you do something on schedule chill, you compare the new schedule chill with the old schedule chill. Yeah, okay, but how competitive is it? So you compare it with Intel P state power save. Yeah, but what if power save is not good either? So uh, looking at schedule chill and, and putting it, put, put in it uh, against performance, the performance governor is something that upstream is not uh, like openly doing um and um but we should try to start doing i mean if we're serious about because the the, um, the the roadmap the development agenda schedule chill it's clearly going uh forward and forward and forward um to the point of mixing its uh, um its uh, behavior with uh, uh with, the, with the microcontroller because schedule chill has a very appealing narrative like it's a scheduler who has all the information of the task and so on. So it's not something that you give up easily. Like, okay, no, let's go for, for the hardware. It's it's a it's an attractive uh, it's an attractive uh, piece of software that I like too as an idea. The Pelt algorithm is uh, it's it's a great innovation in the in the in the Linux OS. So using it for uh, frequency uh, uh, scaling has great promises. And um, so the, the 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 upstream is heavily invested in it. The, the author of schedule teal uh, is uh, the the pm maintainer and um, and release after release there are steps forward so we we should start uh, like uh, comparing with the big uh, with the top dogs uh, this which, which is what this uh, study is doing then next slide i believe i have just a few minutes left next slide is amd now amd um, um, i wanted to know where we are with amd now, as I uh, anticipated before, now AMD, the diagram is pretty simple. There is nothing. AMD, ACPI, CPU, frac, and then we do um, on-demand performance, which is a different performance. It's this performance and not that performance, but they are almost the same. So schedule chill, on-demand performance, and uh, when there is a, 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 a shaded cell, it means the schedule chill is losing. So schedule chill is losing all the time here. But this is because there are a lot of low-hanging fruits uh, in, um, in, in making AMD compatible, uh, sorry, making uh, schedule shield compatible with, uh, with AMD, one of which is uh, uh, adding um, a feature called uh, frequency scale invariant accounting, very long name for a simple thing, which is uh, if you are going at, I don't know, 30% of your top frequency and uh, you are and and you, your utilization is is maximal you can't say that you are fully utilized because you're only going at 30% of the frequency so you should multiply your utilization for the fraction of the max frequency you're going at so this is a uh, frequency invariant accounting uh, which uh, should be done for uh, for AMD uh, I, I had this, I wanted to do this uh, already, I haven't done it, but it's, it, it requires reading at boot the maximum frequency. Maximum frequency is not an easy thing to get on x86 because there is turbo. So uh, which turbo do we get? The maximum turbo, the lowest turbo? AMD doesn't have as many level as, uh, as Intel, but yet you have to read documentation on where, on which MSR, on which register do you read those values. And th this is all the work that it's requi re required for um, for uh, AMD frequency invariance, and would help quite a lot. Then there is scheduler optimization. Uh, AMD has a, has a specific topology that is not uh, uh, like the Intel CPUs, and uh, so the schedule chill is only as good as the quality the, the, of the signals it gets from the scheduler if the scheduler is not good at estimating uh, this utilization and so on and so forth um schedule chill is not going to be good so the, it's a it's a joint effort um so yeah uh, uh, here i i this is let's say this is uh, we measure the starting point we hope to compare this uh unflattering table with something a lot better in uh in the next uh, yeah we are out of time i guess right
Yeah, that was that was my last slide actually. I just wanted to to show you again this uh, this diagram, which uh, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, it it's starting to get complicated. Uh, so I needed this during all those tests to to remember what I was testing and so on and so forth. So yeah, I believe this is the end of my time. So yeah, it is. So thanks, Giovanni, for this.